dee 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 set things for stun whatever hey it's lee and of course john's gonna have to teach me at one point how to do like the little bumper things and the countdown and all that but this year is not the year for either of us to do that john unfortunately can't be here tonight um you know that real life thing we talked about the other day when we recorded so there's that I do want to let y'all know, I think it's, if you're watching this right now, up at the top, there is a scan me, and that is still for the Dragon Con charity, so hey, just go on and scan it and see what you can do. I did already um, make my donation, and I did it on the app, the text, text to donate, but oops, I sent it to John, and it's not going to show up until tomorrow because I'm not trying to get off these screens, folks. I will screw that up, and we all know it, so shh, don't tell. Awesome. Um, again, I just want to remind you, charity, 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 charity. You've got the uh, Dragon Con Hustle, the Hustle Jubil Jubilee Hustle. That is going to be awesome. I really hope I said that right. But it's the big metal thing that's got the TARDIS and some other stuff on it. And remember... They're going to ask you, what's your favorite track? And come on, folks. You know, you know what your favorite track is. Come on, throw some love to my old track, X-Track, because they're working it hard this year. You guys are going to be so happy with their content. And, of course, I'm, I'm uh, promoting X-Track because I still love them. I love all those shows, too. Um, also, remember that there are the four auctions. I am going to bet anything that the sets of or the set, I don't know if she said sets or not, but hey, you'll find out if you go to the auction, of the hardcore, uh, hard rock, hardcore logo, which is a movie, it's kind of fun, watch it, but hard rock cafe pins for Dragon Con will be in the auction along with all that paper stuff, the programs, and the wonderful little program, uh, the big books, what I call the glossy pretty picture ones, so those will be there. And there's lots of other stuff. Last year, I there's gorgeous art. I was there to bid for a friend. I also was able to find something for my husband for Christmas. And since Christmas has passed, I will tell you, I bid on a set of Star Wars, inter, the, new gener, the next generation towels that were at uh, Star Trek The Vegas Experience. And I had those, and they're great. And then I also got him some mugs. Uh, some pint glasses, basically. And, of course, guess what? We broke one, and it was the red one. Oops. That was the first one we broke. I'm not joking. I really wish I could be joking. Um, but it's going to be awesome. It is going to be great. So the auctions are great. Please, please think about the art auction, especially, because those artists have absolutely gorgeous stuff. The book auction. You never know what books are going to show up. Woohoo! It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I did want to jump in with a few things because I really haven't talked a whole lot. And the reason I'm looking down is because I'm looking at my handy dandy other smaller computer. Um, but there are so many people that are going to be at Dragon Con this year. And I'm just looking at today. Announced 824. You got Brett Breck Basinger who plays Courtney Whitmore on Stargirl. I don't watch Stargirl, but that's kind of cool. Brian Michael Bendis, I do know that he is a comics creator, so ha ha, he'll be here. Um, I was looking at some other people. Um, my husband will probably enjoy this one. We have I, either Jean or Jean McGuire. I'm going to go with Jean. And this is the STL project coordinator for Steve Jackson Games. My husband loves Steve Jackson Games. He has them from the little tiny sets when you used to have to grid out stuff. You, you went and got that grid paper so you could write them all down and know what you were doing. It's awesome. Um, we've got Kayla Compton coming. We have got uh, a lot of voice actors. I'm just kind of going through this really, really, really quick. We've got a lot of podcasters. Um, you've got, oh, oh, I didn't even notice this one. Allison Scagliotti, who we love. She was in Warehouse 13 and so many other things, which we love. Also, Titus Welliver, who played Agent Blake on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you didn't like Agent Blake, he was hilarious. That was the most deadpan person. Even better than Clark Gregg as uh, Phil Coulson. 
Um, but there are so, so many, many, many people. And the app is out. So go look. Go see if your favorite show is going to be there. See if, you know, hey, oh, wow, I saw that person in that. But they're going to be on a different panel. That happens, folks. They own Big name guests, they only probably do four panels during the whole time. And so you might be going to another panel to ask Titus Welliver about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that might not be an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. panel. But, you know, hey, it's okay. It's Dragon Con. Unless there's a very big, these are the only questions we're going to allow asked, which I don't think I've ever, ever heard. Okay, and somebody says it's well over. Maybe it is Thomas Titus well over. I looking at it, it looked like well over. Oops, sorry. Um, you know, know, know that you have my love, Agent Blake, even if I can't say your name right. Um, but it's going to be great. You got, it's going to be just, I can't wait for Dragon Con. As of this recording, it is eight days away, which is a little terrifying, but is also awesome. And it's also the time about tomorrow, seven days ahead of Dragon Con, is usually the time when the major costumers will go, I bet I can work one more in. If you are a costumer, send us an email at 50days at theuniquegeek.com. That's 50days at theuniquegeek.com. And let us know if you're starting one on like the 10th or 7th day before con. And if you finish it, send us a picture. We'll put it up. We will promote the heck out of you because that's going to be so much fun. The person, it's two people, but the persons I am bringing forward are great. And these are some of the mavens of the fantasy track. John, I think I put high fantasy. Oops, it's just fantasy because Lee just finger, I don't know, finger, what is that? Just too many fingers typing. Um, but this is with the fan two mavens who we adore on this podcast. And one of them is Seska Small, who is the track director for Fantasy Track. And she's saying her lovely little name. And the other is Mara Rose, who is running their costume contest at Fantasy Track. So, hi! Hello. Hey. Hello, I hope you don't feel terrible. Um, it's only us here, no John, but because he's usually a lot of fun to make fun of. So, but you know, hey, no, you can make you fun of me. Called, you kind of called me out like before we even got on the show. Oh, I did? Oops. Oh, yeah. Are you what kidding? I'm a costumer that never starts anything oh! at the last minute. Okay, so, okay, then I want to know, then you got to send us an email, 50 days at theuniquegeek.com. Uh, of we'll what you are going to do, and then when you're at con, send us a picture if you did or didn't do it. I love that you costumers are always just like, I can work one more in. Just one more. I can do it. And oh, I yeah. think that's great. My niece is coming. Sorry. Hi, Seska. Wait a second. Mary and I got to talk costumes. My niece is coming this year, and she's a costumer. And every time I've talked to her, she's like, well, I think I want to do this costume, and I want to do this. This is her first year coming. And she's like, I want to do all these costumes. You've shown me all these pictures for years. And I'm like, are you, you can't sew. Nope. Just because you, you can't sew doesn't mean you can't cost it. That is very true because she found people to help her <laughs> sew her costumes. Friend of her, her mother is like, oh, yeah, I'll help you. They're geeky too. <laughs> so that's great. But yeah, I love it. So, Seska, hi. Hi. I'm so yeah. excited to be back. I love I am. Here. I love having you here because you introduced me to a whole world of self-published writing that, goodness gracious, I didn't know about. And I'm just going to say, we are going to have a very different game at the end of this. It, it will not be PG-13. I will give that warning right now. The rest of this podcast is going to be PG-13. But when I tell you we're going somewhere that's not PG-13... We, we are going it. somewhere that is not PG-13. This would be an after 10 p.m. panel at con. And actually, you know what? If somebody wants to do that as a, as a panel when you hear what we're doing, I would be on it because I had to spend two ninety nine on a book today that I will only read if somebody makes me be on a panel about it. You know so, what? You can come what? to said panel. I'm sure we can find a way to get time to... Yeah, oh, I can just come and you'll just put me on something? 
Of course I lost this paper. Why not? I, I keep notes during all of this. Yeah, you'll just put me out. Well, hey, I I am a pro this year. I'm in there. If I know, I saw how exciting. I know it's John and I are both pros. It's kind of it's kind of weird. I'm and sure. Mara, you're a pro pro too, so you can look for Mara Rose. Is that who you they can find? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And y'all, it's kind of Seska. Guess what? Why? I didn't have to put any schedules in this year. Don't make me jealous. Okay, I, I've sorry. been having I'll to ignore now. my own podcast because I'm oh, because I'm so busy doing all the Dragon Con and Page to stuff. And I'm sorry, she it really was a. Has. I'm sorry, it was about to go through my nose. That was Diet Mountain Dew. That that burns, folks. Ooh, just FYI, that would hurt. That would yeah, yeah, that was, that one burns. That's hilarious that you aren't able to do your own podcast. And I'm so sorry because welcome to trying to do it all. Uh, with yes. <laughs> uh, Seska and Mara, because both of them have jobs. Both of them are mothers with children who have some special needs. And both of them are absolutely working their butts off for Dragon Con. Something has to give sometimes, folks. And poor, Ses poor Seska, what, what had to give was, you know, her own podcast that she loves a whole lot. All I right, do. now, Seska. I'm, I'm lucky. I have two good co-hosts who help me. So That's great. And we're going to let everybody promote all their stuff. John's going to have to listen to the episode so he can type it all up. Um, that uh, that's, his, that's what happens when you're not here. That's what he's got to do. So, Seska, because I screw it up every year. What is the difference between high fantasy and fantasy track? Because so, I will screw it up all the time. So high fantasy really focuses on both on how much magic. Typically, when you're looking up the term high fantasy, it means how much magic is in the universe, kind of free floating, how easily it's used, okay. or just that it's a dominant thing. At Dragon Con, what it also specifically means is this is high fantasy track. It's a wonderful, amazing track that covers. Wheel of Time, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, which is kind of what I would call low fantasy, but they also cover properties that have a multimedia component. So oh. they're like TVs, books, shows, movies. Uh, I just cover print and audio. So Only I do print audio and audio. Yeah, I do audio books because audio books count as reading to me. And, I don't um, disagree with you. Audio and, books are reading. And we always do at least one audiobook panel every oh. year because mm -hmm. I I love audiobooks. I think they're a great way to bring a book to life. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're deathly terrified of mispronouncing some character's name is great because you can hear it a lot. I cannot tell y'all how it was until it was probably I'd read all the Harry Potter, no, half of at least the Harry Potter books years ago mm -hmm. because I had no idea how to pronounce Hermione. Yeah. And yeah, and I actually really love that name now. Um, uh, if I had another child, <laughs> no, uh, that <laughs> might have been a name. I'm just not gonna, <laughs> no, I'll take. If you want to hear that story, I can tell you the story of how I had to take a pregnancy test at 51 years old. Woo -hoo, yay! Um, and no, I was not. Thank you. Um, okay, well, so they're a blessing. That's the point. <laughs> babies are wonderful. I love babies. I want everybody to be happy with babies. Babies are great. I, I oof, oof, oof. Yeah. At my yeah. age now, oh, <laughs> oh. I was so happy when mine was able to go downstairs and get cereal for himself on Saturday morning. So, you know, and not even that I slept in that late. It was just like no poking, like, mommy, mommy. Oh, oh mommy. Yeah, there's nothing creepier than mommy. Mommy, are you mommy. awake? Yeah, oh, no, no, you... no, there's something much creepier. The oh. crawl into bed where they say nothing and you just wake up the next morning and they're there. <laughs> and they're staring at you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's always a good one too. There's the th the thrills of parenting they don't tell you about. Yeah, there's you know? no manual for this. <laughs> no, there's really not. And how your child do does it may be very different than how every other child does it because yeah. So mine would always mine was always pretty much just like mommy, mommy, 
mommy. And I'm like, it's 7.45, mommy, <laughs> mommy. I'm like, all right, I'm up, I'm up. I guess you want to eat. Okay, <laughs> I guess you still need to eat. Um, and no, for some friends of mine who used to make the joke, I did not always feed him Lunchables. So, <laughs> so they, they thought I never fed the child. Trust me, if you had seen the child, uh, you would know this. And no, no I totally this understand. Is, I have one right. who's six foot two and weighs maybe 130 pounds soaking wet. Yep. No, oh, my. Oh, my. That's, yeah. How can they do that? I don't He's, know. My son is 5'11", 6 feet, and he constantly eats. But he also constantly moves a lot, too. So, I mean, he's normal sized. I mean, he's not a beanpole like yours. Oh, At no, 130, mine, he's less than mine. So, mine is wow. so much of a beanpole. He, his, his major costume for Dragon Con this year is the Iron <laughs> Spider. If he turns oh, sideways with the mask off and sticks his tongue out, he looks like a zipper. <laughs> You know, he may not appreciate that we're telling it all all the young women at con this. That's then fair. you know what? He should get his own podcast. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there you go. How I don't know how old he is, but then he should get his own podcast. Um, um and also you didn't mention him you didn't mention him by name. It's fine. As long as we call him like kid lit yeah. or adult lit or things like or that. Zipper. Eh. Nobody or knows zipper. My I like name. zipper. We're good. This is going to be hilarious if I go to Dragon Con and I see Mara and I'm like, hey, where's Zipper? And the poor child is standing right there. I'm I'm going to feel a little bad about that. Oh, bit. don't worry. You'll know when you see him. You'll know. Oh, cool. <laughs> My husband is six feet tall and was a beanpole as well when I first met him. I'm not joking, y'all. He had a 28 waist. He was, he was, boop. So, yeah. But he likes cookies. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, you get it. You know exactly. I know exactly where you are and you know where I am. So this is all great. Let's talk about Dragon Con though. Sorry. That's what we're supposed to be doing on this podcast. I know. We're so doing fantasy side track. quests. Of course we are. We always it's do fantasy. Side, side quests. It's fantasy. Thing. There you are. Part of the so, job. I do. Now, I do wonder. I, I know you talked about multimedia aspects. Would the witcher be with you but or is it because it now has multimedia stuff or so we've what? covered the witcher but okay. we really tend to focus on the books more though okay. we did do a panel a couple years I, last year we did a panel every which way a witcher and we had people <laughs> on who um I, I couldn't resist. It was a fun title. Um, oh, we're going to talk about title. your titles. We're going to talk about your titles again because I did go pee before the podcast and some of your titles were very difficult to not like, oh, oh, this I hurts. like but, a well, catchy title. Well, you got them. You do you know, that very well. With every which way, Witcher, we had somebody on who talked about comics. We had somebody who was familiar with the games as well as because the games have been out for a very long time. Oh, yeah. And I didn't even know it was book. a game at first. Oops. And, um, and and the TV show. So we kind of went across how you, you oh, represent cool. something across mm -hmm. those mediums. Yeah. Just because, I mean, how can I not? Every which way, Witcher was a great title. Every, yeah, it great was. Great title. And I also like how you do that because to me... I don't care how you came in as a fan, as long as you're not being an a-hole. Um, because I don't, I didn't know The Witcher was, um, I knew it was a book, but I did not know the game came before the book. And so I actually got somebody who even sent me a nasty little message and said, how could you not know The Witcher wasn't? I'm like, because I don't play video games. I didn't so know that. And, the Witcher game? But I'm game still a fan. The Witcher games are why the books got translated into English. That is correct. I, f I did find that out. So, because so, the Witcher game but, was so popular. I mean, I, I don't like the gatekeeping thing. Everybody uh -huh. has their own experience. And yep. we should just, like, the best thing ever at Dragon Con is we can all, I joke, I was explaining to a new guest who called me last night to ask uh -huh. a question. And I went, Dragon Con is like coming to your home planet that you didn't know you ever left. Exactly. Because yes. I always explain it as the family reunion with 60,000 people you never knew you were related to. I actually say family reunion of people that you actually want to talk to instead of that weird uncle who stands in the corner. Yep. So there we go. But yeah, Seska, I think you're right. And don't, don't gatekeep 
Neil Gaiman said don't gatekeep y'all. So, you know, I'm gonna go with Neil. <laughs> so, hey. Can't, yep. um, can't go wrong with Neil, man. He's you can't awesome. go wrong with Neil. You, you can't. I know. I'm um, really looking forward to one day when he comes to Dragon Con again. Or I'm really I looking know. forward to watching Sandman because I oh. haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, Thank you. Music. I'm not the only one. All they my other just friends. put some bonus stuff out, too. Oh, my yeah. son. I've it's already good. said this. I heard. My son r r raved about it. We went up to Chicago for a wedding. That's why I wasn't around for a few days. And he had watched it. My son has the full comic set that came in one of those big white boxes. He bought it completely done. The Sandman had been out forever by that time. And then when they started the new one, he's got those now. So, um, and he said it was wonderful and I can't wait to see it. But I still also haven't watched The Boys on Amazon, A League of Their Own. I got a whole list of stuff because there's such great stuff out there. And then I got I'm, books. I'm going to ask both of y'all, Seska, what you're reading right now? Right now, I am reading... Alexander Outland by uh -huh. uh, Jenny Koch writing under um, J some G Koch I think okay so Jenny Koch is coming she has a ton of different books under oh. different uh, several pseudonyms pseudonyms that she pseudonyms. uses for marketing mm -hmm. purposes cool yeah. so yeah it's it's it is a interesting kind of cheesy western s like there's some definite like early Star Trek, sci uh, William Shatner vibe to the captain. Awesome, awesome. And so That's it's kind great. of fun. I like it. I like it. Well, fun is good, and um, I love how you, you talked about something fun. This you, there's enough other stress right now. Uh, something fun is great. There is a lot of stress right now, but I like how you said that, Seska, about other authors having different pseudonyms. I did not know really about that until Dragon Con. Mara, I, we chatted before this. I started in 96 too. And Charles Grant came and he wrote some X-Files book. He wrote two X-Files books, one. And he also wrote a couple of short stories. And when he was there and he was talking about, well, I write um, like my action dramas under this name. And then I write kind of sci-fi stuff under this name. And then I have another name when I write my romance books. And he must have saw my face because I was like, and I later went up to him and asked him to tell me the name he wrote under because I was going to read them. And I can't remember it now, but I did. And it was really good. So, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think you should read for fun. And that's great. The Alexander Outland book. S books, I'm assuming. Uh, uh, Alexander Outlander. I think there's more than one book in the series. Okay. I'm just on book one of the audio books. There you go. And Mara, how about you? Uh, I'm actually okay. So I'm I'm a person that's a little ADD when it comes to my book reading. Um, I yeah, big surprise. <laughs> no, right? Big surprise uh, on Seska's face. Yeah, yeah. A bit too well to know that I would not stick with one thing for probably more than a couple of hours before moving back to the first. Yeah. Um, but it's a way around American. <laughs> okay. Well, wait a second. You're going in and out, Mara. Hold on a second. Okay. Can you? Tell us the books again. I can yeah, hear okay. you now. It was just going bloop, 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 bloop. So gotcha. Um, so, yeah, basically, I, I have kind of a ADD approach to books, much like uh, I deal with, you know, the farm. I, I feed the chickens, then I move to the cow, then I, you know, run around. Right. So, um, right now, I am reading Testament, Testament of Steel by Davis Ashura, mm. which is really good. Uh, I've made it. I think now to chapter nine, I'm really getting into it. It's, it's very intriguing. Um, and just, he's coming to dragon con too. Yes, he is. I can't wait to get him to oh, these it. authors. All um, these authors. And then I just started broken world by Charles Gannon. Uh, he's also coming. Yeah, I know. Like all of my favorite authors are coming to dragon con. It's a little crazy. And what's really fun is that they're my favorite authors because I met them through Seska. There you go. She, she knows she, everyone. She, she knows everyone, and she probably pimped the books to you, I'm assuming. Um, actually, she didn't. I just oh, I was introduced okay. to these people and then was introduced to their books. Uh, but uh, that said, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm also rereading The Hunger Games for probably the 30 millionth time because it's a main staple, and sometimes mm -hmm. we get, you know, 
other stuff going on, you want to go back to something that's familiar. And mm-hmm. books are like good old friends. Yep. Um, and speaking of good old friends, I'm also reading another a friend of mine's book um, again no. uh, because he's got big news coming out. And he was supposed to be at Dragon Con. But, but he oops. Him, unfortunately, mm. um, his name's Rod Belcher and the book is Brotherhood of the Wheel. So. Brotherhood of the Wheel. See, I'm writing that one down. Yep. Because my husband is always looking for new stuff. Um, I already if you have like sci-fi spaghetti westerns. Mm-hmm. Brotherhood of Steel. Brotherhood of the Wheel. Of the Wheel. Yeah. See, sorry, y'all. Um, he's so excited for the Ring of Power series. Um, yeah. Um, I think is- Jennifer and High Fantasy is doing something special the night it comes out. Oh, very. I will let him know. Um, I yeah. Um, I like The Hobbit as a book. I like the animated movie. Pretty much done. Elves never got dirty in the movies. I, it, it, there were so many things. And then it, there was added. I, we're not going to get into that because that is a very long rant on my part. Um, but he has copies. Anyone ever wins the book versus movie discussion? Ever. I don't think so. And and that's fine. I You don't gotta. But for me, I think the biggest issue was I was never that big about the trilogy part of it. The, the King trilogy, the Return of the King part. I love The Hobbit, though. So I've read reread The Hobbit lots. Um, but yeah, sim, Cimmerillion is a word I try not to say too often around here because then there's a long chat and I don't want it. I don't. I love him. <laughs> He's upstairs right now. Shh. But yeah, it's good. Awesome. So there we go. Some book recs, people. Look them up. Look them up. Look them up. Um, so this is great. Now, Mara. Yeah. You guys are doing a costume contest, which I mean, we're started thinking. a couple of years ago, if I'm correct. So how did how does a costume contest for you work? What's how's it going forward? Okay. So, <laughs> oh, uh, that is an evil laugh from Seska, by the way. Oh, that was bad. Well, there's a reason for this because there's a story behind it. Ah, See, I love a good story. Okay. Yeah. You've been coming since 1996. Yep. So you remember the Dawn contest. <laughs> okay. Do you remember when the Dawn ended and they began the comic book pageant? <laughs> you didn't like the yes. comic book pageant? I did like the comic book pageant, but the first couple say- of No, I did, but the first couple of years it kind of wasn't it, it didn't take the step away it needed from the prior version. Absolutely. And then Peter David and George Perez took over as the MCs mm-hmm. and it became the page to stage comic book pageant. There you go. And that was that. George Perez, all right. Mm, we lost miss- a good one this year. Yeah. yeah. We lost yeah, a great a We lost loss. a great one. Yeah. Very So hard. it started uh-huh. that way. Yeah. So that's how it started. And mm-hmm. so. When, uh, you know, people get tired of something or when it right. doesn't you get quite the numbers or whatever. Yeah, you need to keep it gonna, fresh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, about, I think it was six years ago now, they traded out the um, page to stage comic book pageant on Saturday night mm-hmm. for the aquarium contest, The Chosen, um, which ran on Saturday nights for, you know, one, two, three, four. Technically, I guess four years if you include um, virtual, because I think they did something with it. I might be wrong. I can't remember. I can't remember now, but not. yeah, okay. But, but a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. exactly. A few years. And yeah. then, of course, the aquarium went into renovations, and they didn't do the costume contest anymore. Right. Right. So the year that, uh, the year after the virtual. Mm-hmm. So 2021. 2021. 2021 and I'm, I'm sorry let me just stop this I know most people are listening to this podcast version so I'm going to tell you the s- evil smirk on Seska's face <laughs> as Mara is telling this story makes the story even better so just think that the track director right now is sitting there with this kind of like <laughs> I know something you don't know kind of oh. smirk so yeah because so Mara I'm sorry yeah coming. Yeah, she lived it. I, I know what's um, coming. So back in, yeah. I, I have to go back again because now we've caught you up to where the costume contest mm-hmm. sort of began timeline-wise. Mm-hmm. Well, 
I am from a little town in the Blue Ridge Mountains that has a very large geek community. Awesome. And we were very involved in many conventions in the area. And I had this friend who worked in one of the conventions and she came down to Dragon Con. She'd been doing Dragon Con forever, too. Yeah. And she was like, while you're here this year, I need you to meet my friend. And oh. so about eight years ago, I get a knock on my door at the Hyatt. And I uh -oh. open the door. And my friend Melissa is standing there and says, I need you to meet my other friend, Seska. I only have two friends, not really. But yeah, you, you got to like each other. Yeah. Who would have thought with the way she introduced <laughs> It, it really, it really was very interesting. It was one of those, the two of you are pretty much identical. You have to yeah. meet each other. Okay. Gotcha. And so what was very funny was that Seska and I have been friends now for, I don't know, pretty close to at least eight years, I think. Yeah. Um, and she's known all of this stuff that I do and she's watched my Facebook and all of these other crazy things, seen all the costumes I make and never put two and two together. And so Oops. in 2021, she says, hey, we want to put on a costume contest on the fantasy literature track. Do you think you could help me out with that? Just, I didn't, Just a little In my help. defense, I did not know this was like asking Neil deGrasse Tyson if he knows what a star is. Well, I'm so sorry. When you start a response with, in my defense, didn't you're know. done. You're I done. Keep going, Mara. Keep going. Okay. So just for some reference here, uh, I was the vice president and then acting president of the International Costumers Guild, <laughs> which actually does the international guidelines for fair competition and organizes and that kind of thing for international competitions. I've also been running costume contests oh. literally for 26 years. And so I had just got back from like three or four contests <laughs> when she came, because at that point in time, I think I was doing something insane, like 24 or 25 contests a year. Mm. Um, and I was like, I'm going to step back. I'm going to, I'm going to be done with a few of these. And she came to me and she goes, I want to run a costume contest. Do you, could you help me? And did she, did she do that face too, that she does? She was like, look, just look at the, just look at these The books. face right there, the, right there. Yeah, now. that one right there. I was technically not on video chat. Thank you. Oh, Mary. that's true. That's, I, I was yeah. driving that. home from work and I was like, this is a long shot. But maybe, maybe. I got to try. I thought it was hysterical that she thought it was a long shot. I was like, Sasha, <laughs> do you know what I do for a living? Yes. And I was like, chickens. I was, Yes, chickens. I do chickens. I do farms. I also run a production company. I'm also an educational and disabilities advocate. I wear like 19 hats. Well, you also wear a hat as an actual professional cost costumer. I am. I, Which, I actually, yeah. I run a production company called Prop House 42 Productions. We make mm -hmm. costumes, sets, and props for the entertainment industry. Oh, cool. And, Prop House 42. <laughs> and so I just went, yes, I will help. And she said, it doesn't have to be anything big or special. We need to come up with a name. And I went, why don't you go to Dragon Con and ask them if they will let you bring back the page to stage. Okay. As a literature costume contest. Okay. And a couple days later, we started planning the first one. There you go. And then it just kept going. Now you're yes. in year, this would be year two officially. Yeah. This is officially right. year two. Now, mm -hmm. last year we did what we call the open division, which is a standard costume contest. Mm -hmm. uh, costumers make a, a costume from any uh, literary source. It can be fiction, nonfiction, manga, graphic novels, comic books, comics, plays, um, etc. All of the other fun things or their media adaptations. So we do allow them to use source material from television, films, streaming media, uh, musicals, um, manga, or anime, uh, and video games. I'm As sorry. Hold on I know, a it's hard, right? No, no, wait, no. All I can sit here and think about is because you said any literary source or media adaptations. Um, yeah. So all I can think about is Hamilton, which is this book that is oh, yeah. five inches thick. And then I think of the adaptation and I'm like, that's amazing to think about. Like you've got somebody from the Hamilton, the book where this is his autobiography and all of that. And then you've got the wonderful yeah. uh, musical. And so you have those two beside each other and that would be 
awesome. Exactly. Yes. And awesome. so yeah. basically in the open division, you can make any costume for any character throughout those oh. literary sources or media adaptations. Mm -hmm. Enter it in the open division, bring mm -hmm. it to the um, contest. Yep. You have to submit documentation that shows how you made the costume so our judges can get an idea of what your process was. Okay. And then you meet with our judges before the contest. They ask you some questions. You get about three, four minutes with them. Mm -hmm. And then you hop back on out the judging door to the backstage area and wait for your turn to get on stage for your technical rehearsal. Where Ooh. you get 90 seconds on stage to act as your character and entertain the audience. Now... There is a big difference between this and the masquerade. Mm -hmm. Masquerade is more of a folly style presentation. Right. More about the make people laugh or, uh, you know, <laughs> get get those really clever, um, interesting tweaks on, you know, a yes. costume kind of thing. Right. This is 90 seconds as your character. So right. It can be dramatic. It can be you know, emotional, if you can style, like a anything lot you want of to bring. very dramatic audio entries. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, they're amazing. I cannot wait. Audio, just be, audio. Or uh, yeah. they're dressed and then they're also just well, doing. Yeah, no, work. but I'm just talking like we've, we've previewed and listened to some of the audio oh. submissions. Oh, okay. So, and, and the music is really good. Ooh, so dramatic. Goosebumps. Now, that's cool. not to say we don't have our own sense of humor. Oh, of because, course. You know, the, as an homage to the uh, comic book pageant of old, mm -hmm. we do have, much like the Masquerade had a stormtrooper for years, if people mm -hmm. overstay their welcome, yep. we have I our think... stage security Deadpool. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I loved I love dancing with the Deadpool's at the parade. Um, so I that is I've awesome. Met you before uh, you probably have. <laughs> you probably uh, I w I'm the person who has to get everybody in a line. Oh yes, oh yes, yes, yes. I do remember you. I, yeah, marching, yeah. I was the marching band coordinator. Oh, last. very cool, very nice. Um, but anyway, so uh, <laughs> so yeah, we give them. I, I apologize, I digress. Um, but no, we give them 90 seconds on stage where Very cool. they, uh, during tech rehearsal, they go out, they practice their routine so that way they know where they are in proximity to the edge of the stage. We don't want anybody falling off. Please don't. Um, and that, because you know, that has happened before in other stages, mm -hmm. not ours, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's and, happened. It's an oops, but it's happened. Yeah, yes, exactly. Then they get to go on stage for the big show, which has some big surprises. We've got an amazing opening act with some authors you would never expect to see doing some things Ooh. you would never expect to see them do. Seska, uh -huh. how'd you, I don't, I don't want to, yeah, Seska, what was the whisper? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. I was just going, oh my. Oh, Let oh my. my. Yeah. So, that was my little sea shanty. It didn't work. Anyway. It's a she shanty. Okay, that well, worked. I mean, I was trying to whistle one. It didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. I got you. Um, but uh, but then, of course, the contestants get to do their portion of the show. And we begin with the open division. And mm -hmm. then we move on to the new division, brand new this year. Okay. It's the invitational division. And the invitational division is a big deal. Mm. We took, uh, we, have, we have a character selection who sat down and pulled 40 characters out of multimedia, um, large uh, publication print and independent print sources. Mm -hmm. And those 40 characters went up on our website and mm -hmm. people ha got to nominate costumers oh. and cosplayers or apply themselves. Okay. And our selection committee went through and picked the 10 best costumers that they could find to make those characters that they selected from that list. Okay. And so if you're interested in who they are, they're actually already up on our website. You can go to dcpagetostage.com, click on Invitational Division, then click on 2022 Invitational List, mm -hmm. and you will see who the costumers are and what characters they chose. There and you. they will be up after the Open Division. They get to do their sketches, which is going to be really cool. Some of them are going to be phenomenal. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you have ever been a fan of the fifth element, you want to come. Those if are always wonderful. Fan, Those, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you are a fan of Sailor Moon, 
you want to come. If you like <laughs> comic books or Star Wars, you want to come. The Invitational Division is impressive beyond so, belief. So I'm not. I, I I'm 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 just curious, asking for a friend. So in Star Wars, I mean. Would the character be called, I mean, did you do Kylo Ren or who was the character? Oh, see, I wanted Kylo Ren with um, the, we with actually the pants. Count but Dooku. hey, um, you did who? We did Dooku. Oh, that will be awesome too. Because yes. that was some serious gravitas. Yes. While eating scenery by Christopher Lee. Um, it's, that was it's pretty awesome. It's to yeah. one of. Uh, the character selection committee's favorite um, series of graphic novels. Oh, okay. Uh, Very from cool. The Star Wars universe. So, all right. Yeah. So basically, once they get done on stage, while the judges get to deliberate, Seska's got a charity auction to run. Okay. I well, knew. hold on a second. Hold on a second. When is the costume? When do they have to sign? Do they sign up on that DC stage oh. to pay, yeah. page to stage, or what happens? DCPageToStage.com. There is one spot left. One. Oh. That's it. There well, is one spot left, and the competition uh, registration closes August 25th at 11:59 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh -huh. Which means right now you got a little over 24 hours left, but you Oops. don't just have to register by then. You also have to have your documentation your MC announcement and your music in by then. So contestants, if you're listening and you haven't gotten those things in yet, please do that now. Yeah, please do that now. Um, I love this idea. All right. So what night is the costume contest? The big one that everybody can see up on the stage. Thursday. Thursday night. So, All right. Now. In seating at eight o'clock. You probably want to get there a little early. Last year we had a line of like a hundred people for almost the whole show. Wow. And I where is really it being bad when I had to go out to go to the bathroom? Yeah. And the year. track director can't get back in. No, because they, no. because somebody wanted to go in and I'm like, I'm going back in. I'm working the show. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sitting yeah. there and I'm going, I'm sorry. Don't hate me. That's why we so, have those little ribbons. Come, you can get ribbons this year. Yes, we do ribbons! have ribbons. We have Yay! ribbons to give people. Yay. Okay. So it starts seating at eight. Now, where is it being held? It is in the Regency of the Hyatt uh -huh. in the 6-7 ballroom. So that is right across from where the wrestling will be. So basically, Regency <laughs> of the 7, when you get down the escalators, <laughs> you make a right instead of a left. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And those are just, you got to go down just one, just one floor, right? Or just two? one level. Just, just one. one level from the lobby down the escalators. You got now, it. If you're a contestant, you're going to come to Embassy uh, Hall at 5 30 in okay. the high. And we'll work with you there. Yeah, but see, we're not going to talk about that because don't try to go down there and no, 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 be no. a contestant. We will very nicely we'll ask you to go wait in line. Okay. Hey, hey, Somewhere hey, else. We'll help Thursday. Thursday night at 8 p.m. All right. Now, while the judges are tallying their votes, there's an auction? Yes. We have a Ooh. charity auction. Okay. So we have about three <laughs> items, maybe five, maybe a little bit more. It all depends on getting everything together. But one of the things we have guaranteed is have, if you are a listener who has gone to the Bain Road Show and you have seen their large posters with the mm -hmm. foam core of the cover, we have one of those from the Bain Road Show. The band, the band books road show, right? The Bain, Bain. Bain, Bain books. Okay, Bain books. sorry. I so we have one of those. Ones. Bane was very nice to donate oh, it to us. Very nice. And so. um, hopefully, I'm, I'm working with getting some of the authors in earlier to just swing in and sign sign it because it's an oh. anthology cover. Very So, cool. yeah, it's going to be really awesome. It's from the Black Tide Rising, and I do not remember which co cover it is. But it, it's the second anthology in Black Tide, the Black Tide Rising series. So um, we also have a book donated by Falstaff Publishing. They did one of their their shingles novella series, got optioned for media, and they did a uh, limited run of very nice, I think, leather-bound copies. I haven't seen mm. it yet. John's bring John Hartness, our MC, is bring, and owner of Falstaff is bringing it 
two page to stage signed by all the authors in it and everything else and it is very very limited there were less than a hundred made so that is yeah. excellent so folks come on if you want this go 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 charity charity so, charity and then, it all raises great money for open hand it I all know, right? open hand atlanta it's perfect come on those are my those are dollars that if we get to 100k dragon con matches and come on we want to stick it to the man we all yes, know we it do. even though we I really like know. all of the men uh, all of the quote unquote men the leaders at dragon con we love rachel and dave and everybody and the board so, and everybody else. But, and yeah. then the third big one that's really awesome is mm -hmm. from jim nettles who owns <laughs> authors essentials services and he Let's see. He's very nice. He gave me this author essential services in case I forget. He goes, in case you forget. Author essential services. Okay. So he has a series of virtual workshops that he's put together that are designed to help any creative turn their passion and creativity and artwork into something that is actually a sustainable business model for them. And, and wait, how do we get those? He had the package. He's going to get all the details of which ones. I think what we're, we're working on is hit, it's like a three workshop package and you can Ooh. pick the three so that we can, if it's somebody who's more into author, they can do more authory because he mm -hmm. has, he's done stuff with Sifwa on like, if you're already an author, but you know, unfortunately you want to prepare for that time when you, uh, it may you may be leaving your IPs to other people to carry on ah, for you. Gotcha. He's mm -hmm. got some stuff on like a workshop on that. He's got amazing stuff. He's wonderful. Um, he's a great author too. So I mean, if you're like, hmm, what else does he do? He does great cool. authoring stuff. So we go. have, and uh, we have some other stuff we're working on. <laughs> so okay. it, it's entirely possible there will be a unique item donated from Prop House, but we are not going to talk about bruno until bruno is done yeah we don't talk about bruno so that's very good <laughs> um i do want to say i saw something about when and where will the charity auction that will have the giant baby dragon be if i am understanding correct that is at the main auction which is sunday morning yes not um, me not yes. this one not this one but that should be the main one on sunday and i promise you if you go to the charity page it's probably up there telling you where that big baby dragon is and I really, really want it, but I really, really don't. I know I can't get it this year. I'm, I'm probably going to be there trying to outbid people. Yeah. I hope it doesn't go too high. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I might go there trying to. Or you might have a I can at least there. see it. Ooh. Or I can at least see it from, you know, far away. But that would be cool. Um, but that, yes, is going to be in the main auction, and that would be great. Um, we love us uh, some baby dragons at Dragon Con. We love dragons. Yeah. I mean, it's called Dragon Con. But I, I one of the, the first stops. They gave her. You what? I'm sorry. I love the name they gave her. Oh, what was the name? I didn't hear. They named her. Uh, oh gosh, it's Lieutenant Ahura's first name, and I've just blanked on it. Okay, I know that. I know that. Uh, I do too, and I just N literally blanked on what it was. It begins with an N. Nahuru? Nahuru? No, no. No. Nikita? No. No. All right, so Victoria? let's just try, keep chugging. No, Victoria. it's not Victoria. N Y O T A. No. Neota. 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 There we go. Yeah, we, 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 not be three brains can get there. Three brains, we can all, yeah. Uh, that, Neota. Thank you, Jan. Tired. Thank you, thank Sorry. Thank you, Zan. Glad you knew it because it was kind of driving us a little crazy. Uh, but this is always fun. So, yeah, that would be. Oh, I love that name. Oh, that's a lovely little homage. That is a lovely, oh, lovely, lovely homage um, to that. And when my husband found out how old she was during the filming, this is Nichelle Nichols. He was like, how old did you think she was? I was like, I don't know, mid 20s. And he was like, she was in her late 30s. And I'm like damn that she looked good for late 30s damn so yeah so and then she looked great all the way through but if you think about her in the hohura years I, I, she was in her 30s i yeah. was in, i didn't look like that in my 30s i don't look like that in my 50s so. yeah well, she was also a dancer she was a dancer she did she was a dancer yeah. and lots of fun stuff okay so now seska oh god help us all 
<laughs> See, do you hear this? Do you hear this evil grin? This is where she made me pee, almost pee my pants last year. Well, no. Twice she almost made me pee my pants, but I know about Chuck Tingle now. So, Saska. <laughs> If you, if you want a warning now, I'm, I'm just going to say, if you want to hear me honestly lose it to the point where both Seska and John thought we've lost her. She's gone. <laughs> Listen to the fantasy po lit podcast from 2021. It oh was hilarious. It was funny as anything. So Seska, you're going to have a lot of book authors, which is great. And people should look on that and look under the author's name because it'll tell you where they are, when they're doing signings, when they're going to be in tracks, when they're going to yeah. be doing panels. Um, also, it comes up a lot and people ask this. Do, hold on just one second, Mara. A lot of people will ask this. Do the authors charge for their autographs? No. And they you, do not. I have never seen an author do that. They're just so glad you bought the book. Um, and I will also tell you that they will sign your very old, very broken version if you want that. Because some of us still have things like that. They have the first Kevin Anderson they read or the first, I, I can go through the list. They will sign and you're like, I know it's really beaten up. It's like, no, that's great. It meant you read it. You know what I mean? So that's always good. Um, so look up the authors, but Saska. What are some of the names and descriptions of your panels? Let us all blessed be as we listen to this. Oh, okay. And I'm sorry, Mara, you wanted to jump in. Sorry. Say, Mara. Oh, no, I was just poking her. This is what we oh. do. I, I poke. Oh, you're poking her in yeah. the box. I got you. Oh, you have poke. to understand. No, wait, I've been poke. listening to the panels and, and helping troubleshoot like yeah. descriptions. And like, this has been six months. I can't wait. Go for it. I know. I All right, Seth. Any of these are oh. going to break her this year, though. Uh, um, there's okay, behind. What? I'm only on. Keep 16. going. Go for there's, it. There's uh, behind the scenes of lit RPG into the mechanics. Mm. Fairly mm -hmm. normal. To love or not to love. Um, let's see. We have Blasters and Blades podcast goes fantasy. Mm -hmm. Um. We have. Editor here, editor there, so much ink, all the different kinds of editors, IP here, IP there, IP everywhere, intellectual property. IP does, yeah, that's a, that's one that got me last year, so sorry, <laughs> a little giggle there, a little giggle. <laughs> we have Take Thee to the Punnery. Uh-huh. What's in a pen name? So it is funny that you, uh, what's in, uh, it's all in the name, so why pen names? Uh, we have Magic in the Military Complex. Mm -hmm. Um, we have designer diseases are us. Designer diseases are us. No COVID. That we, we sounds um, specifically. There will be no discussion of recent headline making diseases from Mundania. Okay, that's good. I also just want to say that's a little scary when you talk about what diseases we make up as you're a chemist in real life. I am a so, chemist, and the person yeah. hosting it is a PhD epidemiologist. Mm. Mm, you're oh, happen to be one of your brothers. Shh. Doesn't matter. Epidemiologist, <laughs> they can be a brother. Or I know they many epidemiologists. They're they're all good. Um, but um, the, yeah. and the panel is stacked with people with great backgrounds, both in writing plays, mm -hmm. but also like we have somebody with a mental health work background. We have several medical doctors on it. It's just going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, more human than human gorgons beholders where's oh my um and then i think our favorite one boinking beasties, beasties. oh wait we have fantasy dating game too because and we do yes. that saturday because you got to go on your date before you can go to the boinking beasties well okay. you gotta have a date oh. before you can boink <laughs> <laughs> i broke her you didn't break me. This one did not break me, but okay, I am so glad I went potty. My, my night lineups, we got... Uh, well, I'm trying to find on stage, you on this, and I always... We got on stage, right. going to a party, going on a date, and boinking. Okay. 
So if Dragon Con ever spreads into Monday, I don't know what I'm with the next level. Oh, no, 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 no. Seska, Seska, you got getting dressed up, going to a party, going to the date. What happens after the date? So the next morning would be the hangover. There you go. Or, which you've already got because you got the CCC panel, you didn't say. Yes. Okay, so I am really trying, and I don't know why I'm now having a problem doing this, because I am on the app, um, but, you know, it's been a whole year. Uh, so where is, what, how do I find your schedule? You go to events, and then I always put the filter on and put uh, fantasy literature. Tap the filter, well, we there we go, gotcha. I remember. This year. Yeah. A what? A what? We have a total of 30 events this year. So. Okay. So uh, I'm She's now very I'm now here. Uh, yeah. So there's, wow. Okay. And then let's see, Friday, I'm making sure to love or not to love is uh, one of the names. On Saturday, let's see, editor here, editor there. I'm just kind of looking, looking to see what in the world. Fantasy dating game. All right, yes. so the fantasy dating game and then the Boinking Beasties. Boinking <laughs> Beasties is really about Boinking Beasties, folks. If you ever went to the Pern track and they were talking about, like, dragon sex, which they did. Yes. This is this is that kind of it is, it, lovely yeah, love, the, uh, love making. Yeah, the lovely love making between Beasties. So tell me about this fantasy dating game. <laughs> Actually, Mira moderates it. Oh, really? Um, so we have a group of authors who are wonderful uh -huh. and have agreed to role play their characters on the old school dating game show. Like the old school dating game, like, hi, hi, yes. Bachelorette number one, or hi, yes. Bachelor number two. Kids, exactly. it's on it's on YouTube, unfortunately. You can go find it. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah, so, we do that. So it's a lot of fun. Yep. And oh. um, it's generally pretty funny to watch. And uh, last I year was great because uh, several of the people had good friends in the audience heckling. <laughs> heckling? Oh, it was yeah. Last year was awesome. So they we had three on one panel that were actually in a role playing group together. Yeah. Which was great especially since i decided and i've been role playing and stuff for years so well they were all lit rpg authors we had a yeah they were all lit, just lit rpg authors and they were hilarious oh it was great we, we I, basically yeah. got together right before we were like okay so you guys game together and um you're gonna play that yeah. we played off each other like crazy last year i decided i was because i didn't have a character to be on the dating game i made my own character all right, I said to Seska, I'm going to dress up as a character and I'm going to be that character for the day. Awesome. Game. And she okay. let me. So I was Janet from The Good Place. And I love I Janet. I love The Good Place. Too. So it's this place year place is a big place. surprise. It is not Janet from The Dating Game. This year's a big surprise. But if you like Star Wars mm -hmm. and you also like moms, you Star Wars and moms get a kick and a half out of the. Um, game show host for the dating game this year i can't i am so excited i can't stand it i just want to le read some of these speakers because at some of the people that will be on the this event uh doug berber burby mm -hmm. burby michael chatfield uh isabel hardsty aj hartley who is an excellent excellent speaker whenever he's so, fun he's, he's so much fun a lot of fun, and it's going to be probably even more fun. Uh, you got Dr. Perry. Y'all can look this up. Tamson Silver. Y'all can look this one up um, because, wow, oh, wow. I also like that you have Midnight Fantasy Games and Charity Collar at 10 30, 11.30 p.m. Yes, we do. And that's called Fan Midnight Fantasy Games. So I don't even want to know. And charity color. So go do the charity color part. I don't want to know what the other part means, Saska. I'm asleep at 1130 because I'm old. I, I actually don't moderate it. My track second lo loves it. And so she moderates it because Melissa's amazing. I'm I'm actually, wow. Uh, yeah, Melissa, way to go. Good luck. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, where does fantasy in and horror meet? 
horror start. I honestly think that should be after, right before the Blinking Beasties. I'm just going <laughs> to tell you if I had put this together. Uh, but this is, like, awesome. I love it. Uh, you guys will, y'all just get to have fun. Um, this will be great. Uh, so, all right, now let's get the, let's get the minutia done. Seska, where is the fantasy track? So the fantasy track is in the Hyatt. In the Hyatt. International Tower, second floor down in Embassy Hall, straight at the end. You get uh -huh. to be led into temptation by sci-fi lit on one side of the hall and uh -huh. writer's track on the other. Okay. So, oh, and you really, really can't go wrong with any of the rooms. No, not at all. So, they're talking about... They're all talking you're in a room. They're all talking books, but I will also say, and John and I have said this for years, Mary, you've been going since 96. You probably are the same way. I have found new fandoms because I've wandered yeah. into the wrong room. Uh, that was when I was able to wander. This year will probably, that will happen again. I have found new loves from old fandoms. I have found new writers. I have found new artists. I have found new actors. Um, and so, yeah, uh, and I've also, you know, it's just great. It's, it's a lot of fun to do that. So do that. Now you have a Facebook page. We do. What is that? What is that one? So it is fantasy literature at Dragon Con. Well, that's really tough to remember. Okay. And then we have one also for page to stage. And another one for page to stage. So, and then you also just have a page to stage website, which we have said was, yes dcpage2stage.com. Yeah, and we did the third, we did a page to stage um, freestanding Facebook page in part uh -huh. because it has been wonderful and an adventure to coordinate because this is really like I'm hosting and talking about it, but there the other tracks have also helped so much. Costuming oh, tracks been part of planning this young adult literature, sci-fi literature, spec uh, diversity and speculative fiction. Uh, all, uh, uh, I can't wait history. to go to some of those. I cannot wait to go to some of those diversity and speculative fiction. So, because yeah. this will be my first year that I can actually really get time to go in and find one and sit down and watch. Yeah, it's, and so that'll it's be going great. to be really fun. But we really, so this is like, I'm hosting it and doing the, the brain head organizing with Mira about it. Mm -hmm. But it's really the combined tracks of Dragon Con and and uh, the combined literature tracks of Dragon Con with costuming track doing this. And it's been an amazing adventure and I've learned a lot. And, and she's going to learn even more because this year we added a little bit. Next year. Mm -hmm. Next year we get started early so we can make the no, 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 no. What? Huh? My okay. computer froze. Oh, your I don't know froze. what you don't, said. Don't do I'm that. not responsible. Oh, okay. you don't know what I said. I said next year we start earlier so that that way. We oh, yeah. No, that that part I can have, okay. have yeah. more time for the invitational. Okay. Yes. And and y'all, um, I feel like a slacker as a pro because I just looked at Mara Rose's uh, <laughs> schedule on. And I am very sorry that I feel like a slacker. So, hey, track directors that know me, if you need me on a panel, I really do feel like a slacker doing this. So hit me up if you need me. Um, you guys know how to reach me. Panels, It's fine. It's a lot. And but so you have. They added and there's some. Great ones. Yeah, they do. I love help. My child wants to cosplay. Yes, that one. I wish I could tape and send to my sister. Um, <laughs> what? Feel free Feel to comment just hold my us. phone up. I, yeah, I might. There you go. Um, you know, from fandom to fortune, freelancing. I'm going to bet fortune can be a subjective term in that way. And so originally it was all about how to make a career out of your costuming so you can do mm -hmm. it professionally. Yeah. And it kind of got back and bumped back to make it a side gig. But uh, I think everyone with the exception of one panelist there has actually done exactly that, gone from making yeah. costumes as a hobby to making them professionally and actually making a living out of it. Yeah. I have a dear friend who I get to see, I hope, at Dragon Con, uh, who is a costumer as well, done a whole lot of work uh, in Atlanta and cool. did Walking Dead and did uh, some of the Marvel movies. So Very awesome. you can make that a living. And that's always what I want to say to people is a lot of people talk about industry, whether it's books or whether it's 
acting, voice acting, gaming, there are ways beyond what you might think of to be in that industry. Absolutely. I got some you of know, my best starts at Dragon Con. That's exactly right. And you can do, you know, you can be an actor, but there is also sound and there is production and there are different levels of production. And then there's after production <laughs> and then there's editors for books. Yes. But then there are also people that are doing everything else in the book industry. So you got lots of things to do. If you know you're interested, you want to talk to people, go to some of those panels. And you have a up, skill set. Them out. And you have I a know, skill set. I know somebody who she works as an assistant for a couple, a couple different authors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um and and it's great because yeah. um, they are very good very talented authors who cannot find their own socks to know when or know when to put on their socks to go to a schedule well you know sometimes people need especially very creative people need somebody to help them keep on track fair <laughs> and that's not I, I wouldn't know anything about that nor and even though i'm not that creative because I can barely draw a straight line. Guess what? I I understand that sometimes you need somebody else to help because you just, it's too much. All right. So now we got everything done. I really want to thank both of y'all, Seska and Mara, for being here. This, I want to say two things also right now. Number one, if this is, because you can drop out of the podcast after I talk. Number one, charity, 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 charity. I'm going to say it all the time. Charity, 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 charity. I'm going to say it all the time. And Blood Drive, if you are interested and if you can. Because, you know, let's let's beat that silly little West Coast con and that New York City con. I mean, please. We are so much better than that. Uh, so there's number one. Number two, John and I are figuring out how we're going to do it. But we have giveaways for 50 Days of Dragon Con. Ooh. Because our most wonderful friend, Steve, helped us. Steve and Raina, our Canadian friends. You always need friends in Canada, folks, because one day I might just have to run across that border instead of wearing a red dress. Um, look it up if you guys don't understand why. Oh, I no, I totally run get that Oh, one. I know. Mara, Mara gets it. No, but get if, it. if you don't get it, you need to. But it's always good to have friends in Canada. Um, but be ready for some of this. Uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. So we don't know how we're going to do it yet, but we really want to thank Steve and Raina for them. They're so cute and we're just dying to show them off, but we're not doing that until you get to Dragon Con or like right before Dragon Con. So you'll know. And we don't know how we're going to give them away. We have very, very few. I mean, like in mid double digits, um, but we're going to figure out a way. Um, I'm trying to come up with questions that would make sense from this podcast, but well, that's been a bit of come a Come to difficult... the fantasy gather. I'll give you the microphone. You can ask anybody in the audience who knows the answer. Oh, no, no, no. I now there's a calm, friendly, friendly. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, uh -huh. what, that's what I like about it. It's a literature it party that's very sensory friendly. We don't have yeah. loud music. No, you don't. And that is true. It is an amazing. You guys are always very, very careful um, to help with anyone who may need some special help, special needs. You guys have always been wonderful about that. So for everybody, for this is Lee saying bye from John and for Siska, Seska and Mara saying peace and bye. Now, if you are still saying here, folks, if you are still saying here, the rest of this podcast will not be PG-13. And you've consented it, by staying. If you are oh, staying, no. you admit that it's not going to be PG-13. Uh-oh, Mara, what? You got to go? Hi, sign, bye. Hi, sign, Mara's got to go because, as she said, she's a mom. And I've taken up already about an hour of her time. So That's okay. He, Just actually, here more. It's actually Oops. before 10 o'clock. And, and there's a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old playing over there. So I'm good. Yeah, go make sure they don't like there's no blood. <laughs> bye! Bye, we loved you, Mara. Bye. All right. So if you're staying here, now it's just Seska and I, and this is bad, folks. This is her again, those listening as a podcast, she is sitting here going <laughs> and clapping her little hands. Honestly, she is. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna give you to a count of ten. Kids, ask your parents. Parents, I'm not joking. This would be an after 10 panel at Dragon Con. 
So five, four, three, two, one. All right, you've decided to stay. So <laughs> last year, I'm gonna, and I wish John were here because this would be the bestest of all the things to do with John because he could not have gotten one out. Last year, this lovely lady, Seska, introduced me to an author I'd never heard of before. And as I said, best way to know about this and how I took it is to listen to last year's fantasy lit podcast. Because she, oops, that's not Amazon. She introduced me to an author called Chuck Tingle. I had never heard of Chuck Tingle, which is probably the funniest pen name probably ever. I'd never heard of Chuck Tingle. And then Seska also said, I can't believe you haven't heard of Chuck Tingle. And then she also said, and then I cry when I see that Chuck Tingle makes money from these books and poor me. So, okay, yeah. He's a doctor. It's Dr. Chuck Tingle. Well, yeah. All right. So, Ruth, grad school will warp your brain. I'm pretty. I think we read that last time and I was like, no, not. I don't. I don't know that I can call that a doctor. But Chuck Tingle. <laughs> is on Amazon, and he is a Hugo Award nominee, Dr. Chuck Teagle, is an erotic author and Taekwondo grandmaster, almost belt, uh, black belt from uh, Billings, Montana. After re receiving his PhD at DeVry in holistic massage, found uh, himself fascinated by all things sensual, leading to his creation of The Tingler. A story so blissfully erotic that it cannot be experienced without elic eliciting a sharp tingle down the spine. Okay, so what we're going to do here is each of us are going to, we're going to list all the Chuck Tingle books, right? So, and you can just get the list of Chuck Tingle books. They're uh, titles by Chuck Tingle. They're right here. And we're going to look at these. I really wish I had them in a different order but what we're going to do is each of us are going to choose one for the other and we're going to read through that description because these descriptions Seska how would you describe these descriptions interesting <laughs> okay that's the uh colorful okay. colorful funny? colorful will work funny no punny 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 and funny also, a, when you read them on Amazon, an amazing, amazing abuse of all caps. So, yeah. yeah. So, we're going to choose one of these to read the description of. And what do we say? If you have to, if you laugh two times, you're out or... Sure. sure. All right. So, if you laugh two times... Or three times is a charm. I don't know. Which one you want? I think three times is a charm. If you go three times in one reading, you're there. And so I am now going to ask you, dearest woman, I am uh, going to ask you to read, and I'm looking at the, all the titles. Um, I think you should read The Butt Pounder of the Opera, please. Okay, let me see. I have, I, 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 I have not read it. No idea about it. Oh, this was another one that's two ninety nine. So if you want to chart just start your Chuck Tingle collection. Two ninety nine on that Kindle. Out. I'm just, Let yeah. me see if I can find it low to high on price. Uh, just actually, if you just type in the butt pounder, I'm going to bet this book comes up. Well, maybe not. He has a lot of books that talk about butt pounding. Okay. Strangely enough, I got several that weren't him. Oh, wow. Uh, what? Why am I not finding the butt pounder? The butt pounder of the opera. I can't believe you can't find it either. I just actually went to the Chuck Tingle page and then just kind of screamed went through the uh titles by oh there's the problem i accidentally put but i forgot the space between butt and pounder oh that's that would be important and spelling's Mr. a thing people well it would also be i'm sure there there are different 
meanings for it if it's together or apart in Chuck's books. So, um, oh, I'm certain. So, the butt pounder of the opera. It's opening night at the Billings Opera House, and Corbin has found himself in the leading role. The opportunity is a dream come true, but when Corbin learns that the butt pounder of the opera, he's set on edge. It's said that a gorgeous Bigfoot lives in the abandoned opera house tower, so handsome that he's forced to wear a half mask in an effort to keep from distracting the actors. When Corbin spots the butt pounder of the opera himself, he perform, his performance falls apart. Now he must confront this mysterious Bigfoot before tomorrow's show. Soon enough, Corbin is wrapped up in a new erotic performance with the butt pounder of the opera inside his butt. This erotic tale is 4,000 words of sizzling human on sentient butt pounder of the opera action, including anal, blowjobs, rough sex, cream pies, and gay Bigfoot love. Are you okay I there? I'm, I'm, wow, I couldn't even listen to it. So I, you've probably already won this game. I don't, we got to come up with a new one for next year. We got to just make John do it. I, I honestly think. All right, so now you... Can John read them and us keep make, from giggling? Right, exactly. I think that's exactly for next year. So now, which one do I get to read? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. She's also going to remember, you know, which tracks I was on and things like that. And, oh, wow. This is... Let's do... Oh, oh. Trans Wizard Harriet... Hobber and the bad boy Parothesis. Okay, hold on. I, I and the bad boy. I got it right here. Wow. <clears throat> I can do this. I can. I, I'm gonna win. <clears throat> I'm really not. Okay. Trans with trans wizard Harriet Prober Prober Prober. Sorry, Prober is a master smell smith, spell smith who's found herself in a bit of a pickle. After finishing Wizard College, Harriet made a name for herself by creating a hit viral spell, but has since failed to craft a follow-up. Now Harriet's agent, Minerma, is breathing down her neck, suggesting that Harriet take a trip to an island off the coast of England for inspiration. An island off the coast of England for inspiration? No, folks, that don't work. Hoping for some peace and quiet to clear her head, Harriet Pro Porber, it's not, I can't, yeah, okay, arrives to find that her new neighbor, an angsty bard named Snabe from the band Seven Inch Nails, okay, that's one, is already there making a racket. This Parasarolophus spellcaster is a bad bad boy through and through and with whew, and with his incredible powers of meta magic snape i'm out reveals that the slayer of reality is more than it seems oh my goodness soon enough oh wow soon enough these two are discovering they have more similarities than differences both trans both strong both hoping to create a new spell that will change the world but with the addition of two devious, sentient motorcycles, y'all, I'm not joking, <laughs> to the mix, Delatrix and Braco, those are the names of the motorcycles, things start to get complicated. It can, um, all right, so now trans, I've already lost, but, you know, except for one universal truth, which is true, love is real. Um, this 52,000 word bad boy romance novel for adult, for, this is a, for adult. It contains some explicit scenes. You know, I thought this game would go over longer, but my face is already red and it already hurts. Um, <laughs> wow. Y'all, this is what you get if you go here. Um, I would not suggest following Chuck Tingle, because I did that last year because I knew I, would, knew I would forget the name. That did not go well. And especially when you have 
an Amazon Prime account you share with your 22 year old son, let me explain. It was like, mom, what the? I'm like, no, sorry, not following anymore. It's because podcast I would... research. <laughs> it's all podcast research. Yeah, that's, I can't wait to explain that to my husband tonight. All right, so, Seska, we have probably just ruined a whole lot uh, more people. Um, <laughs> I am very proud to have helped you with that. That was fun. I thought I'd get through more. We didn't. Next year, I do think we have John read them and see how long we can not lose it. It's harder to keep a straight face when somebody else is reading them. It is, right? It is. I can't, I just... You know, I like good fan fiction. There's a lot of great fan fiction out there. I have no problem with that idea of taking the fan fiction idea and changing it to your own little universe. But not with dinosaurs. <laughs> How about Bigfoots? There are a lot of Bigfoots. There are all there is also um a megalodon. Um I mean a shark. there's scary stories to tingle your butt. Yeah, there are scary dinosaur stories to tingle your butt. There are four volumes of that. Seven. Seven now? Is it no, seven? No, this might be... Oh, no, sorry. That's seven tales of gay terror. Scary stories oh, okay. to tingle your butt. Seven tales of gay terror. Yeah, so there is also bisexual mothman mailman, which, yeah. Pounded in the butt by my own butt. This is the one Man! that had me howling over last year. Uh, and where was it? Some Firefly fanfic where Walsh rides dinosaurs. Okay. And yeah. I, all I had was an image of Chuck Dingle dinosaurs. Yeah. Chuck's dinosaur. Yeah, that would, no. Chuck's Dinosaur Tinglers has volume one, two, three, and four, if I am correct. So, y'all, th th I'm just, FYI, uh, be careful when you go to Seska's pan panels. Because she will possibly read you some more of these if you ask her I nicely. will entertain you for sure. She will between panels. That'll be great. All right, Seska, we are done. <laughs> we are done, thank God. Uh, yay. Thanks for everybody. Thank oh, you. we still have five, five people watching this. I'm glad <laughs> the people with kids got off. And I'm really glad yeah. I didn't ruin nobody. Seska, it's always fun to talk to you. I cannot believe we've talked for an hour and a half. Um, it but happens. that happens a lot, uh, especially with you because, oh, heaven, y'all do a lot. Y'all do a well, lot. And we love fantasy you. Fantasy is such a broad topic. Fantasy is such a broad topic and leads you gotta to. You got into those details. And <laughs> like, you know, two bucks for the price of one and all of that. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to say bye after this. We're just going to say do not follow Chuck Dingle unless you want some very public service very announcement. Very public service. <laughs> that's our PSA. Very, very interesting recommendations where you left off from Amazon. Just FYI. We love everybody. We can't wait to see everybody at Dragon Con. This is Lee for Seska. And John is so glad he wasn't here. Bye, y'all. And we are now ending the broadcast. Ta-da. <laughs> yes, I want to end the podcast. I love how.